Welcome back to the Team O'Neill Rally School. I'm Wyatt. What we're gonna talk about today, high speed driving with high center of gravity vehicles. If you're just looking for the 10 second takeaway, basically get away with everything you possibly can without tipping it over. But what we're gonna look at this episode is how to judge the center of gravity of a vehicle, how to drive so that you lower your risk of rollover, and when it all goes wrong and the vehicle starts to tip, what you can do to correct for that. What you're looking at here most commonly is gonna be pickup trucks and SUVs, but also, you know, vans, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, any of this stuff. There's an actual equation to figure out the center of gravity of your vehicle, and if you've got the time, go for it. But if you're going to eyeball what's going on here, all you're really looking at is the ratio of the width of the vehicle to the height. And any particularly narrow vehicles or any particularly tall vehicles, you're going to be at a higher risk of rollover. Once you take a look at the width and the height of a vehicle, take a close look at where most of the weight in that vehicle is. Your engine, your transmission, and your running gear are down pretty low. What you're trying to avoid is anything that's particularly up high. That vehicle is going to roll over a lot more easily. Whenever you've got extraneous gear, you need to freight down for a trip. Get that gear as low as possible and as close to center mass of the vehicle side to side. Even an up armored vehicle, having that weight out on the door panels is going to be a big problem. Two other factors that are gonna make a huge difference in how easily your vehicle rolls over is how soft your suspension is and how tall and soft your tires are. An easy way to do this is to just do the quick shake test on a vehicle, literally stand on the side and just push side to side and see how much those tires deform uh, because that's obviously creating body roll and that the softer the suspension is, the more likely your vehicle is gonna to be to roll over. Older vehicles and more off-road biased vehicles are gonna have solid axles, front and rear. More do-it-all capable vehicles like this truck behind me have a solid axle in the back and independent suspension in the front. And then more high-speed biased SUVs are gonna have independent suspension front and rear. For high-speed purposes, that independent suspension is gonna perform a lot better than a solid axle vehicle. If you do have a vehicle that has solid axles front and rear, like a lot of Jeeps have had all along, that vehicle's not gonna perform the same way at high speed cornering as something with independent suspension definitely will. As far as actually driving these vehicles at high speed, you've usually got some really nice ground clearance and suspension travel that give you a big advantage on rough terrain, but you really need to avoid massive side to side weight transfer. You can be very, very aggressive and drive very quickly in a straight line. You can brake extremely hard, you can accelerate extremely hard, you can carry a lot of speed over some rough terrain. It's just when you see tight corners coming up, scrub your speed in a straight line, do your best to trail brake in, know how much side force you can load onto your specific vehicle before you get into the danger zone. The amount of grip you have on the road is pretty much directly proportional to your rollover risk. If you're out on a frozen pond, you can slide around all day long, there's no risk of rollover, you're gonna be fine. As you get more and more grip, your chances of rollover are higher and higher and higher. So out here on the gravel, you've gotta be a little careful, but you can get away with a lot still. If you're on dry pavement, be extremely careful because just turning aggressively and poking the brake pedal is gonna cause the vehicle to flip. One thing that can make a huge difference is selecting four wheel drive if you have that as an option. Basically any truck or ATV or you know UTV, when you're in two wheel drive, just the rear wheels are getting power and that thing's gonna fishtail around and you're gonna get big yaw angles all of a sudden and that's gonna cause you to roll over a lot more easily. Putting that vehicle into four wheel drive is gonna make it a lot more stable. You're gonna skid around a lot less and you're gonna lower that risk of those big yaw angles and exposing the sidewalls of the tires and you know causing a lot of rollovers. So on rough roads, try and be as smooth as you can, pick the smoothest line possible, and if you see a lot of sharp rocks, you've gotta go pretty straight and drive over that with the treadier tires. The more you're sliding and the more you're hammering around, you're exposing those weak sidewalls to any sharp rocks that might be in the road. Because if you think about what can dramatically increase your risk of rollover, Getting a flat tire as you go around a corner, especially if you're going fast and pushing hard and coming into a turn and that outside tire goes flat, that can cause a snap roll right there. We all remember the uh, 
Ford Explorer Firestone debacle from a decade ago or whatever, flat tires in high center of gravity vehicles are a huge problem. The same could be said for driving high speed on rough roads. The main thing you're looking for as you're coming into corners, bumps on the inside, holes on the outside. Those kind of things are gonna increase that angle and cause the vehicle to roll much more easily. Even if you're doing your best to drive smoothly and pick a good line, things go wrong. If you clip a corner or have a problem out there and the vehicle starts to roll over, your only corrective action is to turn downhill and accelerate. We've been joking for a long time now about doing a how to drive on two wheels video. If you know we get enough comments, we're definitely gonna do it because uh, it'd be fun. But essentially, when you get a vehicle up on two wheels, whichever direction is downhill is safety, and whichever direction is uphill is rollover. You can see that driving low speed off road, and you can see that you know in rally cars tend to roll over a lot more than normal cars. So it's critically important to at least run through that in your head and kind of have a little idea of what you're gonna do in that situation because some people go backwards and just know if the vehicle pops up on two wheels, downhill on throttle and it'll pop back down to safety. So that's the basics of driving fast with a high center of gravity vehicle, whether it's an ATV or a pickup truck or anything like that. They have some pretty huge advantages, even in an urban situation, what can be drivable terrain to you is much better than if you were in a sedan or a little hatchback or something. Just don't expect them to handle like a sports car and certainly be ready with corrective action when it all goes wrong. As you're modifying a vehicle, definitely, if you need to go taller for more off-road capability, think about going wider to compensate for that. You can do that either with you know, wheel spacers or different offset wheels or longer axles or control arms or whatever you need to do. You see a lot of the desert racing guys, you know, the trucks are huge, but they're wide enough that their center of gravity is really not that terrible. So that's the basics of high speed, high center of gravity. Thanks for watching. If you're into these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot here. If you're into the Team O'Neill Rally School, you can come on out and drive all kinds of rally cars and do different things. It's a great time, teamoneal.com. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.